Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation of my undergraduate research. My name is Chloe Looney, I'm a final year psychology student at the University of Limerick. Today I am presenting my final year project titled Attachment as a Moderator Between Social Support and a Cardiovascular Recovery from Stress. I would like to thank my supervisor Dr Stephen Gallagher for his help and support on this project. During this presentation I will provide a brief overview of key concepts used in the study, as well as the study's theoretical background, purpose and aim. I will outline the study's methods and key findings, and lastly, I will discuss the study's limitations and future directions. Here are some of the key concepts that you will come across in this presentation. Cardiovascular disease acts as an umbrella term for conditions known to affect the heart and blood vessels, such as hypertension and coronary artery disease. Cardiovascular reactivity refers to the difference in heart rate, blood pressure, or other measures of cardiovascular function observed between periods of rest and during the presentation of an external stressor. Whereas cardiovascular recovery is known as the psychological process that follows reactivity or the time it takes to return to baseline cardiovascular levels after stress. In the field of health psychology, stress is defined as a process in which environment demands tax or exceed the adaptive capacity of an organism, resulting in psychological and biological changes that may place persons at risk for disease. While social support refers to the informational, tangible, affectionate, emotional and instrumental supports we receive from relationships which help us feel that we are cared for, loved and valued. The current study focuses only on instrumental support, which is the perceived availability of people who can provide practical aid in carrying out daily tasks when needed, and emotional support, which is the availability of people to listen to one's problems with empathy, caring and understanding when needed. Attachment is a deep and enduring emotional bond between two people over time, in which each seeks closeness and security. A number of attachment styles exist. However, the current study focuses on anxious attachment, in which a person experiences anxiety in their relationships with significant others in their lives, or avoidant attachment, in which a per person avoids emotional closeness with significant others. Cardiovascular disease accounts for nearly half of non-communicable diseases and remains the leading global cause of death accounting for approximately 17.9 million deaths per year worldwide. The World Health Organization expects that this number will grow to over 23.6 million by 2030. The prevalence of cardiovascular disease may be lowered through the identification of its risk factors and formation of therapeutic responses to those factors. Extensive research exists on traditional risk factors such as smoking, obesity and genetics. However, it is crucial to also consider the psychosocial factors that are important determinants of cardiovascular disease. Stress has been noted as a particularly important risk factor for cardiovascular disease. This idea that psychological stress contributes to physiological outcomes has been well documented in relation to stress and cardiovascular reactivity. As you can see here, the cardiovascular reactivity hypothesis suggests that the intense cardiovascular reactivity to psychological stress contributes to the development of cardiovascular disease. Yet stress is not a standalone concept and not everyone who deals with stress develops a cardiovascular disease. One difference between individuals who are likely to develop cardiovascular disease and those who are less likely to develop cardiovascular disease is perceived social support. Research has shown that social support can have a buffering effect on stress related outcomes. The stress buffering hypothesis shown here suggests that the social support an individual receives to have available to them weakens their perceived level of stress and thus maintaining and improving their cardiovascular health. This illustration demonstrates how the stress buffering hypothesis can be applied to real life. You can see here that this woman is experiencing stress. Then she speaks to her friends who give her instrumental support by discussing solutions, etc., and emotional support by being there for her and giving her a hug. In turn, this support that the woman receives allows her reactivity to stress to become lower. So the aim of my research is to acknowledge the lack of in-depth analysis for cardiovascular recovery and also contribute to emerging research on the psychosocial mechanisms such as social support and attachment that may underlie cardiovascular recovery such as measures like systolic blood pressure recovery, diastolic blood pressure recovery and heart rate recovery. I'd also like to provide an understanding of the possible protective factors of cardiovascular disease through analysing cardiovascular recovery of healthy young adults in Ireland. 
The current study hypothesizes that the relationship between social support and cardiovascular recovery from acute stress is moderated by an individual's attachment style, as you can see here in the diagram. The study is a secondary analysis of an existing observational laboratory study, which used a one session between subjects factorial design. There were 278 participants, which were young adults from the University of Limerick. 92 were men and 178 were women. The mean age was 21 and the age ranged between 18 and 58. The dependent variable was cardiovascular recovery, which was measured for systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure and heart rate. The independent variable was social support, which was measured using two subscales, emotional support and instrumental support. The moderator was attachment style, which also used two subscales, anxious attachment and avoidant attachment. So now I'll briefly go through the measures and procedures used in the study. Sociodemographic questionnaires were used to assess demographic information such as participants' age, gender and ethnicity. The close relationship revised questionnaire was used to assess attachment. The National Institute of Health toolbox adult social relationship scales were used to assess social support. The Alter Trier Social Stress Task was used to produce stress in participants and the Stress Rating Task Scale was used to see how stressful participants expected the task to be and how stressful it actually was. Lastly, a Phenometer Pro Hemodynamic Monitor was used to measure cardiovascular function. So first participants were sent an information sheet including the exclusion criteria and information about the study. They were then called in for a one hour testing session. They were given 20 minutes to acclimatise and get used to the environment and baseline cardiovascular measures were assessed for a 10 minute period. Then the stress task was given to the participants for a 10 minute period while their cardiovascular reactivity was measured. Lastly, they were given 15 minutes to recover after the stress task. T-tests were conducted for a number of reasons. Um, the first T-tests were conducted for as manipulation checks to confirm that the tasks were physically and psychologically successful. Then to see if there is a difference in relationship status between ratings of attachment and support. There actually was a difference between those who were single and those in a relationship. So this was used as a confounding variable in the moderation analysis. Uh, we found that there was no significant difference in recovery between stress conditions. So whether you did a math ta task or a speech task or the order in which you did both didn't matter, it didn't make a difference. So correlation analysis were also conducted and the results are shown here on the graph. Um, there was a correlation between high insecure attachment and low social support and also a correlation between high avoidant attachment and low systolic blood pressure recovery. The main moderation analysis were conducted using multiple regressions and we found that two, and two models were significant in this analysis. So the first is the moderation model for avoidant attachment, emotional support and systolic blood pressure recovery. In step two, the interaction between emotional support and avoidant attachment was significant and significant covariates in this model included anxious attachment, instrumental support, heart rate reactivity, systolic blood pressure reactivity, baseline systolic blood pressure, baseline diastolic blood pressure and baseline heart rate. The interaction caused a significant change to the model, thereby suggesting that the relationship between emotional support and systolic blood pressure recovery was stronger when the presence of avoidant attachment was lower. This can be seen in the graph to the right. For those high on avoidant attachment, when emotional support increases, systolic blood pressure recovery carryover decreases. While for those low on avoidant attachment, as emotional support increases, systolic blood pressure recovery carryover increases. The second moderation analysis, which was significant, was the model of avoidant attachment, emotional support and diastolic blood pressure recovery. In step two, the interaction between emotional support and avoidant attachment was significant and the interaction caused a significant change to the model. This is displayed in the graph to the right. You can see that for those high on avoidant attachment, as emotional support increases, dystolic blood pressure recovery carryover increases, while for those low on avoidant attachment, as emotional support increases, dystolic blood pressure recovery carryover decreases. 
So what do these results actually mean? In short, the study's results show that the emotional support may be a protective factor against cardiovascular disease, depending on an individual's attachment style. The relationship between cardiovascular recovery and emotional support is different across attachment styles. This finding is in line with research based on psychosocial mechanisms that underlie cardiovascular reactivity, which provide evidence that attachment and social support are related to cardiovascular reactivity, and therefore it's plausible that they are also related to cardiovascular recovery. Furthermore, it is worth noting that attachment was not found to be a significant moderator between heart rate recovery and social support. Although extensive literature exists focusing on heart rate measures, blood pressure responses have also been found to be associated with development of cardiovascular disease. The current study found that attachment and social support are important factors affecting blood pressure recovery. This is conceptually sound as studies have found that the late, delayed cardiovascular recovery is associated with future development of hypertension. So next I'll quickly talk about the limitations in future directions of the study. Since I've conducted this research as part of my undergraduate degree, it's definitely not without its limitations. Firstly, use of the total carryover method for recovery is not the most reliable um, method for calculating recovery. The area under the curve method is more reliable and accurate. However, use of this method was beyond the scope of the study. Secondly, the use of self-report measures for attachment and social support may have an effect on the accuracy of results, as both attachment and social support contain further subcategories that were not assessed in the current study, such as affectionate support. Lastly, manipulation checks are viewed favourably by prestigious journals. However, the typical manipulation check is a verbal rather than behavioural measure, which may undermine its accuracy as participants' perceptions are not always in line with actual measures. Future research in the area should consider including a distinction between perceived social support and actual received social support. Studies have demonstrated that there is a difference between the two. However, most have suggested that perceived social support has been more consistently related to beneficial health outcomes than received support. Secondly, the cardiovascular reactivity hypothesis suggests that cardiovascular responses to stress contribute to development of cardiovascular disease in both healthy and clinical populations. The current study consisted of 18 participants who were found to have at least stage 2 hypertension at the time of assessment. In additional analyses, where these hypertensive participants were removed from the sample, attachment was no longer a significant moderator of the association between social support and cardiovascular recovery, meaning that the hypertensive population were driving this analysis. It's advised that further research focus on hypertensive populations to assess the magnitude at which psychosocial factors may lower or accentuate these blood pressure peaks. Overall, these findings contribute to the wealth of literature demonstrating the benefits of social relationships for physiological health, and this research also contributes to the limited literature that considers cardiovascular recovery as a key protective factor of negative cardiovascular health outcomes. This concludes the overview of my undergraduate research. Thank you for giving your time to listen to my presentation today.